Hey guys, I'm Jacinta Robinson and welcome to the Fearless Podcast, where I interview athletes who've achieved incredible things. Today's guest competes in the World CrossFit Games. We speak about how do you actually get to competing, what is involved in competing physically, mentally, nutrition, training, and injury prevention. We also speak about is CrossFit for the general population. I'd like to welcome Matt McLeod. Welcome to the podcast, Matt. Thanks for coming in today. That's okay. Thank you. So um, our guests don't know, but you are a CrossFitter and you are ranked number seven in the world. That's incredible, mate. <laughs> Uh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. That was from the, uh, this year's games. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. And then fifth in Australia in, what was it? The opens? I yeah. Guess? Yeah. The CrossFit open. So yeah, I got fifth in, uh, in the Australian region or in our country, uh, for the open. Yeah. Where was that? Uh, where? Yeah. Um, so, uh, the open it's, uh, done online. Yeah. It's essentially, so you can do it anywhere you want and you got to record your uh, video and all your weights and all that sort of stuff. And then uh, you submit it through and they'll either reject it or accept it or they'll adjust your score if they need to. Um, so, yeah, and then you submit it all and there's sort of like an online leaderboard that you can have a look at on the game site and you sort of see where you're ranked and stuff in different countries or in the world or whatnot. So That's really um, cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's pretty cool. Park. It's, everyone can do it. So yeah. it doesn't matter who you are. You get to compete with like the people who, like you look up to or like, you know, the best in the world. You get to compete in the same workout as them. So it's yeah. pretty cool to see where you sit against them. Yeah, yeah, awesome. And I was reading some stats about you. Your back squat is like 190 kilos, man. Like, <laughs> that's uh, it's, heavy. It's pretty small compared to some of the other boys and girls, actually. Oh, really? There's a, there's a lot of strong people out there. I'm just trying to hang in there with like, you know, the average crowd. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, the top end of the, of the games athletes. <laughs> I think the most I've ever done was like a hundred and I was like three reps and that was done. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I was like, that was full on. And then I was just reading also like your deadlift is um, 225 and then um, your your maximum pull-ups in a row is 72. That's like gassing doing pull-ups. Yeah, yeah it is. It's Yeah, yeah. You come off and your arms are all pumped up, hands are like swollen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then you grip and, oh, mate, that'd be, that's full on. <laughs> so flashback, where did this all begin? Um, so to go back, right back to when I was like a little kid just walking, yeah. I was also swimming before I could walk really. Yeah. So I swam for about 15 years, like competitively in surf life saving and in the pool. Wow. Um, it was sort of around 17, you know, you sort of get to like end of school, finishing school, you know, you get to that sort of lazy yeah. stage. Um, I sort of started just joined joined at a boxing gym just like i'll just do some fitness had a mate that went there and i started boxing competitively after that yeah. for about four or five years and uh while like getting in the ring and stuff yeah 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 i had i think i was like 15 or 16 uh fights wow um across it yeah so um and it was fun like i really liked it the the training was really fun and like yeah you get to like fight people which is which is fun as well <laughs> like in that controlled environment yeah um and then it was uh, sort of going into how I got into CrossFit. Mm. Um, there was uh, a CrossFit gym opened up inside our boxing gym. So it was like half CrossFit, half boxing. Oh, right. Yes. And uh, so it was like we had a deal like once a week. We'd do a CrossFit session just as like fitness and whatnot. Yeah. So, yeah, we're doing that. I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool. Yeah, this is fun. And then it's like so it's turned into like two times a week I'd do it and then three <laughs> times a week. And then I was probably doing more sort of CrossFit than I was boxing. Yeah. And it sort of just slowly transferred over into that and i just i enjoyed training mm. more than fighting and boxing so yeah and i guess crossfit your training is how you can it's the same as your like game day so yeah it's sort of just really liked it and mm. that's how I sort of come about and what element do you like about the um the training is it the weights is it completely gassing yourself in the endurance oh, like what is it i, I don't know <laughs> you, know, it's, it's, you feel good afterwards like you finish your training session you're like oh i feel better yeah feel better than i did before so i guess that you sort of chase that feeling after each workout yeah and have you had any struggles like um in crossfit tell me about like a moment that you can think about that you you felt like oh my god this is this is challenging for me um it's it's really hard to bring up <laughs> moments like that it's like everyone goes through the same shit all the time you know yeah. we all have our tough moments with like whether it's family issues or personal issues or whatnot mm. um oh there was like 
lately I've been on a good run. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing too bad. Um, uh, like when I was little, there was like a little bit of depression going through when I was like 12, 13, 14. Yeah. That sort of stage. And um, just had a bit of trouble with just what I wanted to do and just your typical, you know, pre-teen slash teen stage as you yeah. go through. But um, other than that, I've, I've yeah, or never haven't really had anything too much of a struggle in my life. Yeah, yeah. It's, I've been pretty good. And did you find like to start off with the boxing that helped you get through like your depression? You found like you had like a sense of meaning when you were younger, or you probably um, yeah, like it it definitely like being involved in sport, whether it was swimming or, or boxing, it did keep your mind busy and keep mm. your fo- I guess focusing towards something, um, even though you didn't really know what it is back then. Like you always say what you want to do, but yeah, I don't think you really know what your goals are until you sort of grow up a little bit more. Yeah. But it definitely did help keep me on track for, you know, where I am now. Yeah, cool. And then how did you know, like going from that point, you're continually training um, younger. How did that lead you into going, okay, I want to compete as a professional athlete? Um, when I was swimming, I was like, cool, I want to go to the Olympics, you know, I want to swim and make it. And I was doing surf life saving. I'm like, you know, I want to make the like, Ironman series and win that. Um, did you do that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I, I, I got pretty, I was up there pretty high in the surf life saving. Yeah. Um, I think we got a couple of Australian medals and stuff in the teams and as yeah. an individual and stuff like that. But uh, that was some, that was so good. Like people that I never lived at the beach. Yeah, people that lived at the beach—they just breathed it. They were in the water every day, and yeah, they were just—they were weapons. They just smacked everyone. Um, Well, probably what people think of you (laughs) (laughs) in CrossFit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. CrossFit anywhere. I guess don't need the beach for that. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Yeah, and then um, when I was boxing, I I had a goal like I want to. Yeah, I want to win the Australian title. Yeah, and I haven't told you this yet, but I did eventually. Yeah, I sort of went up. I, you know. Just slowly worked my way through, made it to states, yeah. and made it into the. Uh, it was amateur um, boxing, wasn't uh, professional, so no one would even know about it. Yeah. But yeah, um, in 2012, I won the Australian title for the Sun State League wow. in boxing, and that was like, I was like, cool, you know, like I think I can do anything I want now. You know, I said I wanted to do this, and no one really thought it was possible, and yeah, worked my way up and and got it, and I was like, cool, I just got to focus and keep trucking away with things, and yeah. eventually it'll happen. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, going into CrossFit, it was the same thing. I'm like, cool, yeah, I want to want to make it to regionals when regionals were about and got to there. And I'm like, oh, cool, I want to make it to the games and eventually yeah. made it to the games. So I think as long as you can stay focused on your goal, you'll keep, yeah, you can get there in the end. Yeah. And do you compare yourself to other athletes or are you just constantly looking at yourself and going, okay, I just need to push myself a little bit more? Oh, it's sort of hard not to compare yourself. <laughs> you always see someone put something up on social media and you're like, oh, I can't do that or that's way quicker than me. And yeah. You're always trying to, yeah, so they can get in your head a little bit. But in the end, it's always like you're just focusing on your own training. Yeah. Um, just trying to, you know, beat the times or, or stuff that you've set in the past and mm. just keep sort of plugging away and using that as your reference to see where you're at. Mm. So for the listeners, tell us a little bit about what is CrossFit? Because it sounds really extreme at the moment. <laughs> uh, CrossFit, constantly varied functional movement performed at high intensity. That's the definition. Yeah, wow. Uh, <laughs> um, essentially, it's just it's like any other fitness um, regime or program that you see. It's just yeah. you, know, you have all your um, – I'll use like F45 as an example. I've never been there, so I've no idea what it is, but I'm assuming it's a lot of like high cardio, you know, always moving, sort of interval style work. CrossFit is the same, except maybe a bit more barbell thrown in there. You could yeah. be implement the Olympic lifting uh, movements and they can be broken down to all different sort of segments of the movement as well. We have the gymnastics and all your monostructural, like running and mm. uh, we use the rowing, biking, um, swimming, even mm. like that gets thrown in there. And you sort of put it all together and you can create a CrossFit program. <laughs> yeah, right. So it's like every element of fitness yeah, combined yeah, into... Yeah, and it sounds pretty full on there, but, you know, you might go in, you might just do a set of squats and then you might do some running and uh, push-ups or something for a workout. It's yeah. as simple as that some days. Yeah. So, you know, stuff you could do at home. And mm. then other days, yeah, you might be sort of breaking down the Olympic lift a bit more and then you might mm. be 
sort of using those technical movements or those gymnastic movements in workouts as well. So it can be a little sort of crazy some days and pretty dialed back other days. And yeah, mm. it's the, if you want to know what it is, go to a CrossFit gym yeah and uh see what it's about <laughs> yeah it sounds like it's constantly um like you you never know what you're in for and you're always constantly testing your different um fitness levels in different areas like with your mobility like what you said with the gymnastics being yeah. flexible and then being strong and then yeah so they they have those um those principles of fitness like you got your endurance your strength power and then flexibility comes into that as well mm. um so you, you need to sort of not be good at one thing you need to be mm. average at everything yeah CrossFit. that's sort of the way they work it out so in competition you don't have to win every event or you don't have to win an event you just have to place okay in all the events don't have yeah. like any ups or downs just be nice and sort of average all the way across the board and that's how you get the best sort of placing how um how interesting because you'd be constantly looking at where your points are at and who's ahead and yeah yeah it's, and it's called leaderboarding everyone yeah. does it that <laughs> competes in crossfit they sort of look at the leaderboard and see what's happening what they got to do yeah like oh i need a win and he needs to get last and i can beat him <laughs> and um, it's a pretty yeah it's hard not to do that sometimes and yeah just, yeah, but um, in competition, I try not to look at the leaderboard. I sort of know where I am. Yeah. Know what I've got to do, but I don't sort of scroll through it all night and just think about it. <laughs> yeah. So tell me about the CrossFit Games. Is it how how much more like the actual event? Is it more intense than doing like the online game that you um, said before or like just training every day? What's the difference? So the games is like a relief. You're there, you've made it. Yeah. <laughs> you've gone through all that other stuff first. And you Do you get selected? Is that what happens? Or So um, the process for the games, do the mm -hmm. Open, CrossFit Open, which is on right now actually for the 2020 season. Yeah. We're about to start week three of that. So it's a five-week um, competition, yeah. one workout a week. So you do the Open. From there, you, qualif you can qualify directly to the games. So top yeah. 20 worldwide in male and female. Um, wow get to go straight to the games, get their tickets straight away. If you win your country, so they call them national champions, you yeah. go there as well. So every country will get to have a representative at the games. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, so it's pretty cool. Like they, they get the opportunity to compete. A lot of countries are stronger than others. Yeah. Um, just like at the Olympics, I guess, as well. Yeah. So like- Who's um, the strongest? Um, the top, I'd, I would call them top four countries. Yeah. would be America, Australia, yeah. Iceland and yeah. Canada. There are a few ah. other sort of outliers like from uh, European countries as well that are right yeah. up there as well. But um, yeah, they're the, like, I think all the past winners, like yeah. champions have been from one of those four countries for male and female. Yeah, wow. Um, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, like I said, you have some like, outliers, like Sweden might pop up a good yeah. athlete here and there as well. So, um, Why do you think that they're the top four? Is it because um, we eat lots? I don't know. I think America, <laughs> I think CrossFit sort of started in America because okay. like, there was a lot of competitions always over there. So yeah. they had a bit of a jump start on it. Um, they have an awesome uh, program through their, like their high school. Ah. Like they, they do like a lot of strength and conditioning as part of their like PE where we like run around throw like balls at each other or something yeah. <laughs> in Australia. But like they're doing like the, the Olympic lifting as part wow. of their just strength program in, in PE. Like they have yeah. an awesome sort of sport program for them as well um and i don't know what is in the water in iceland but they have some <laughs> weapons do you think maybe i was thinking about it maybe the altitude is a little bit different so they're maybe they're like yeah, their lungs I, are conditioned better or yeah maybe or they're like viking ancestors have just given them <laughs> like strength and <laughs> i don't know but um they're, they're very very especially the girls they are yeah. absolutely beasts over there yeah I think there's always one on the podium every year at the games. Oh, yeah, they're, really? They're so good. Yeah, right. So tell me about, like, say you're at the games and it's like a roaring crowd, right, that you yep. that's surrounded you. What's going through your mind? Like, say you're at an event and you're whatever it may be, you've got to do that. What's happening in your mind at that point, knowing before um, you're about to compete? I don't know. It's, I'm sort of used to it now. Like, there's always yeah. crowds at those bigger competitions. Mm -hmm. um, depending what the event is, if it's one where you just need to stay focused and do, it's like a shit workout, you're just going to be in a <laughs> lot of pain. You don't yeah. think about it. the pain takes over. That's what you yeah. think about. Yeah. Um, so you sort of block it all out. If it's like a, a bit of a cruisier event, a bit of a longer one where it doesn't hurt as much throughout it, like you, know, you pace it out, mm. you could like you might sort of 
notice the crowd a little bit more. Like if it's the end of the workout and you're well ahead, you can like, yeah. you know, celebrate <laughs> and run in, like hands up. Yeah. I haven't had, got to do that yet, but <laughs> <laughs> I've seen people do it. And yeah, they yeah. can sort of embrace the crowd and put on a bit of a show for them. Yeah. Um, yeah, otherwise, yeah, I, saw, I don't really notice anyone. People say they shouted out to me. I'm like, didn't hear you, sorry. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, just so focused. Got the blinkers on, just going, yeah. Yeah. And then what about prior to this? Like, going, like, because you have to travel to the games, are you thinking, like, am I conditioned enough for this? Because you don't know what workout you're getting, right? No, no. So at the games, we f- literally find out, they might hint things, but we find out either a couple of hours before or maybe the night before yeah. at most at the games. Um, but yeah, you just sort of, sort of trust that you've done the training, like you know you, yeah. you've you've made it there, so you're uh, you should think that you're fit enough to be able yeah. to deal with whatever's thrown at you. <laughs> yeah, and by the sounds of it, you train all year round. Is that correct yeah. for for this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no real off season like, anymore for crosses. You might have like a week holiday somewhere. Yeah, throughout it, um, I know a lot of the big names do. They might go away for a week somewhere just to chill out, but I guarantee they're training. Yeah. almost every day while they're over there whether it's a run or whatever but they'll still be doing something fitness wise every day yeah yeah and how often do you train a day um i try to train once use yeah. like a three three hour block three of. hours <laughs> oh my god what do you do usually in three rest for about two of those hours <laughs> <laughs> um no, like, cause it's just the way the program's designed. Like, sometimes it might only take me an hour. Sometimes it might take me three hours, depending on what's on yeah. for the day. Um, do you run all these programs or do you follow? No. So I have a coach, um, Darren Coglin. He runs um, a program called GCS Training. Okay. So he just gives me that each day and just tells me what I need to do for it. Yeah. And uh, I just, just follow that. If I need to adjust things for myself, if I'm like a little banged up, I might need to take something out and replace it with another movement. I will, but yeah. Um, otherwise, yeah, I just follow that and uh, just don't ask too many questions. Just <laughs> trust just it. do the work, yeah. yeah. So tell us about food. Like when you're like training for an event, do you, your nutrition's highly important, right? Yeah. Yeah, and so how often do you have to eat? If you're training for three hours a day you're gonna have to eat a little bit more than the average person yeah and i'm terrible with my food i always forget to eat or don't eat enough oh my god um i'm good with breakfast lunch is where i usually fall into a bad habit of i've got to decide whether i want to eat or train yeah and i always figure you're not going to get fitter eating so you might as well train and get fitter that way oh my gosh um and then (laughs) i like try to like supplement things in with shakes and stuff if i can if i'm busy um yeah, but I definitely need to learn to eat more during the day, middle of the so day. So what's like a total calories that you're meant to be eating? Um, I'm me- I think I'm meant to be on like 3,800 oh my calories God. a day. Um, I'm probably not getting that in at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> um, so like run me through. What would you eat breakfast? Breakfast, depending on what I want, I'll either have like eggs um, on toast yeah. uh, with some baked beans or something like that. Yeah. That's like my hot breakfast. My cold one's just yogurt and like granola or muesli with some like honey or fruit in there so um and usually i can mix like some protein powder in the yogurt or something like that and that's yeah. like my cold breakfast depending on where i am if i'm yeah. at work from at home um yeah from there i might have like a snack like steal a protein bar from work or something like that and yeah eat that <laughs> um if i if i have lunch it'll just be what i've had for dinner so mm. rice vegetables and whatever meat i had nothing yeah. fancy just the usual stuff and then I'm supposed to have snacks in the Arvo, but I forget. <laughs> <laughs> just, so, like, what do you do if you forget? You just do you eat it at night or? No, I'll just leave it. Just leave it. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, like dinner's easy because you just stuff your face before bed. That's yeah, the easiest one full. to do. Um, yeah, I, I was sort of following the method now Yeah. to like to a T pretty much. And then you just get lazy, I guess you could call it. Yeah. Um, I sort of just guess most of my measurements i just eat till i feel good pretty yeah much and it yeah. just seems to be working so yeah fair enough yeah. And you seem to be putting out the efforts and you're yeah. doing well so yeah yeah so something's working there mm. i recently watched um i don't know if you've seen it um have you seen the documentary the game changes no oh it's a documentary it's a vegan documentary um and it's brought out about um like how they're um are talking about how veganism makes athletes perform better and um what's your thoughts like have you met any <laughs> vegan crossfitters i haven't um, met any i think they're too scared to say if they're vegan or not oh really <laughs> <laughs> like, i've got nothing against vegans i just i couldn't do it yeah you know like i'm uh yeah <laughs> 
It's um, I don't think so. I don't think you could, yeah, get the same yeah output from it. Yeah. Um, like flesh builds flesh, is the is the saying. So you need to eat meat to if you want to gain like muscle and build mm. up your strength. So yeah. Um, I know there's people out there for sure that are probably very I would say genetically gifted and they can mm. um you know just go go vegan and and yeah get successful that way but I believe yeah you need to you need to get your meat and all that sort of stuff in there as well yeah you'll have to watch it check it out yeah, it right, may I'll change your it out, yeah. <laughs> may change your mind so um you like say like with the game when you're when you do the games how long is the event for like how many days is that um four to five i think it might have been four days this year i think they've yeah. gone more days before yeah um but yeah essentially it's like a few workouts a day across four to five days yeah um, and are you eating more food to supplement during that or like do you feel full like you know like when you eat you feel oh it's so lethargic and then are you able to put the output or is there like some sort of uh, strategy so to how you eat when i'm at the games because it's probably one of the few comps that my coach will actually be there for me because yeah. i don't he doesn't live here he's down south um and usually he just knows that i know what to do at the smaller competitions but he comes over to the games with me and he'll literally like just make me eat, even if he has to feed me <laughs> yeah he'll just like say you got to eat this now yeah and i won't feel like it but i'll just eat it and yeah. yeah so he'll he'll definitely help me out with that yeah at those sort of big competitions and make sure i eat what i need to eat um, and is he giving you stuff like you know like to replace like your salts and your electrolytes you know or um, you're just nah, it's just getting, food yeah just, right uh, probably the best thing for you like because um, we don't we have time i guess between our events we get a couple of hours so you don't need to like have things in shake form or what or gels yeah. or whatnot you can actually eat food and get proper fuel in you yeah which is the best way um so yeah he'll go get me like you know a pre-made little chicken veg like stir fry sort of meal and yeah. make me eat that so yeah oh that's very nice of him yeah very nice <laughs> looks after <laughs> you so um because you're training so much like for these events do you have you had any injuries um yeah all the time oh my um, gosh tell me about them what's the worst <laughs> well, I just, one i just don't tell everyone about them on instagram <laughs> like most people do yeah um but um I've like I've hurt my shoulder. I had a bad shoulder for about two years. Yeah, and, and I pretty much couldn't like go overhead a lot. Yeah, um, what was I, that from? What do you think? Um, that was just mainly from me moving poorly and lifting and repetitive movement overhead uh, with weight. Bad pattern. And, yeah, sort of me just going, it'll be right, it'll be right. Then eventually, it, something happened. It's like, oh, maybe it wasn't. <laughs> <going to laughs> it wasn't right. right. So then you got to like look after it and then fix everything and make, yeah. like work on your movement and technique to make sure it doesn't happen again. Um, I've had knee issues just mm. from overuse, I guess, and neglective recovery. Mm. Um, and then back's always a big one. I guess, I think everyone gets a bad back here and there. And just from all the hinging we do yeah. with, uh, with extra load, it just adds up. And yeah. if, you, if you don't keep on top of your, your recovery and your cool downs and, and warm ups, it'll, yeah, you get like just niggles and little back strains and stuff like that. I haven't had anything serious like a disc or anything, but yeah. I've had plenty of back strains where it's getting to the point where something bad will happen if I continue. So, yeah. What um, do you do for recovery? Like, is it stretching or is it? Um, yeah, a lot of mobilizing and stretching. So like mm -hmm. mobilizing is like moving in positions mm -hmm. like you might have a foam roller and you're moving your bowel massage um, or like just working on your, your squat pattern or something like that. And then yeah. like flexibility training, like all your stretches, static stretching and stuff. Mm. And uh, also have physio once a week as well, to, just to make sure. My Everything's body is in good. Check. Yeah. yeah. And like, do you have a specific like stretch program that you do separately to your training or is that incorporated? Like, um, oh, it is separate. I use just an app. It's called GoWOD. Okay. I think, I think a lot of people use this pretty generic one. Yeah. And it just, Pretty much, you just don't have to think. It'll just tell you what to do. So it just, it's more so just makes it easier for the athlete. Yeah. Um, just so they don't have to think about what they need to do. You just type in what you've done and it'll generate a, like a program for you, like a 20-minute stretch or like recovery session for you to oh, do. Oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah so it's really good. Yeah. Because um, I know like even like David um, Gogging says in his book, like he wasn't stretching for a long time. Do you know who this guy is? Nah. Oh, he's <laughs> an amazing runner over in America. Right and, um, he 
crazy like does like huge lifts and everything i think he did like he's done the most amount of pull-ups in the world oh, wow. in a certain amount of time he set a world record anyway he was saying though he wasn't stretching and he got really bad sciatic pain and everything and it wasn't until he started stretching every night and really releasing all the muscles yeah that he could actually perform at maximum um if he really wanted to yeah and i think yeah i think a lot of people neglect um, the recovery yeah, work and it's the easiest thing of your training as well it's like it's relaxing almost yeah but we just we just yeah we just forget to do it just get lazy and not do it mm. and um yeah it's uh, yeah i think really sometimes it. It, it's not enjoyable because like your body's like shaking you're like oh, <laughs> yeah shit. I, I guess like sometimes yeah if you are tight it can yeah. be uncomfortable um but you don't have to like put yourself in extreme pain i guess mm. to stretch as long as you're uh, feeling relaxed and you can like relax into the stretch i guess that's where to start and then mm. should get better over time as you get more flexible <laughs> <Should>. <laughs> so tell me about like because you were just saying with like with crossfit there's a lot of hip hinge and stuff like that do you feel like long term crossfit isn't like it's not something that you would do forever or do you feel like it you would adapt it as you um, um as you age like not competitively you yeah. wouldn't do it forever because like a lot of what uh games athlete would do mm. you wouldn't give that to like your average joe you know some 40 50 year old um person coming into the gym they wouldn't be doing the same thing they mm. would be doing like a more of a general population sort of program um yeah like probably good for about 10 years i'd say and yeah then you might have to start easing it off because the body might just not be able to handle it especially yeah. as you're getting older over that 10 years as well yeah um everything will start yeah breaking down a little bit i would assume yeah and for the general population when they walk into a crossfit gym are they able to like because i know like there's like numbers and and like certain time and stuff like that is it something that you would recommend for everyday population or do you feel like it's something that is like maybe you are fair and it's that next level um, so, so CrossFit, they have something called GPP, which is general, um, population like program. Yeah. Um, and pretty much whatever, whoever you are, mm. you can scale. It's called scaling workouts or scaling yeah. a massive part. So we can adapt the workout to suit anyone. Yeah. Um, so if it's like one of the fittest guys in the world, Matt Fraser, who, who wins, yeah. he's won it four times now in a row. Yeah. You should be able to do the same workout as him in about the same time. Obviously, you'll scale the weights down. You ah. might adjust the movement slightly. Okay. Um, might if you have to, you, know, you can take the distance of the run down, number of repetitions down, suit yeah. the workout to suit you, so you can do it at about the same time he would do it in. Yeah. So okay. So we, we scale workouts down. So you walk into a gym, you probably see about in a class of twenty, there probably be fifteen different weights set up on their barbells. Yeah. Just because okay. they're all doing slightly different weights to suit like their abilities at that given day. Yeah. So um yeah you, you don't ha you won't be doing the same thing as the you know the thirty year old man over there just busting out like two hundred kilo deadlifts <laughs> you might be doing fifty kilo deads yeah and you'd be pumping out you know the same thing at the same yeah. time so and how long do you think it takes for someone to to get at like that level like brand new freshy haven't really done too much exercise and they've got this goal I want to be at the games how long <laughs> how long do you reckon it takes um depending on their age yeah. And how fresh they are. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, if you're, if you're coming in, you're 25 and you can't even do a push-up, yeah. chances are you might not make it. Like, you got to yeah. look realistically there. Um, I think if you're, like, in your, in your mid to early 20s or even late 20s, mm. in your 20s, I'd say, yeah. put it that way, and you want to give it a crack and you've got a decent fitness level, yeah, it, it's there for you to get there. It's yeah. absolutely 100% possible. Um, you can't start too young would be another big thing. Like, Oh, why? Um, you just can't handle it. If you're a teen, like oh, a teenager. Too much demand. On yeah, the like there might be one like in every, like one in every blue moon or whatever uh, that can, can keep going through. But mm. look at the, there's a teen division at the games. Mm. Every teen that competes, they'll either end up getting injured or they'll just fall off the face of the earth. Yeah. You just can't do that too young. Yeah. So, um, and you think it's because they haven't had that years of, of developing that movement, yeah. the strength and the muscle. and Yeah, and, and especially like um, in men, like in teenage boys, like they don't mature to a lot older. Mm. And uh, like you get like the 18-year-old guy, he's, like, he's a weapon, but mm. he's got nothing on a 30-year-old man. 
Yeah. You know, they've got so much more strength on them, so much more just conditioning, all that volume they've done in the past. Yeah. They've just got no hope of competing against them. So, yeah. Hold on. If you're a teenager, just have fun. Be a teenager. Yeah. <laughs> Wait till you're like 20, 21 and then have a look at see where you want to go in CrossFit. Yeah. yeah it's no rush. getting serious. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so I have a question. Now, please tell me the difference between a CrossFit pull-up where you hip <laughs> <laughs> and then a normal pull-up. Like, what's the benefits? Like, we get asked this all the time in the fitness industry. CrossFit They're like, pull-up, CrossFit right? pull-up, it does nothing compared to a normal pull-up. Tell so, us uh, let's about call it. it a gymnastics pull-up. Oh, okay, okay. yeah, Because sure. it's a gymnastics kip yep. that we use. Um, the strict pull-up that you, uh, I, I guess, people are referring to that you should be doing, yep. we do that 100%. Um, yeah. They've been done in competitions that they're in like CrossFit, actual CrossFit benchmark workouts as strict mm. pull-ups. Um, so the reason why we kip, there's two kips. There's a, a gymnastics kip, mm. which is... Uh, is that off the rings? Uh, it can be on the rings as yeah. well. The same kip, but it's done on a, a, a pull-up bar. Yeah. Um, and then there's a butterfly kip, which is a bit faster. And it's like the, I think it's the one people think refer to like a, you know, fish out of water. And yeah. You see people flying around. <laughs> um, it's a... Uh, gymnasts use these, these kips it's yeah. one it's for efficiency yeah. so if we we're kind of do 100 pull-ups would you do them strict or would you do it in a way where you can do a lot of reps in a short amount of time without getting too tired so yeah um, we don't do it to cheat we do it to be efficient yeah um and it, you can relate it to uh to any movement that mm. you do um if it's uh if you're uh, I'm trying to think of something now if you look at an Olympic weightlifter, mm. when they do their lifts, mm. there's a reason why they go down into a squat when they do it. It's because that's the most efficient way to lift a heavy weight. Yeah. They don't want to rip it up off the ground and have to pull it all the way up overhead, all the way to their shoulder in yeah. one movement. They go under the bar to be efficient so they can lift it. We'll use a gymnastics kip to be more efficient in our pull-ups. Yeah, fair enough. Makes yeah. sense. I had see. I thought there was a. Um, I thought it had a um, an effect of when you come down on the pull up. It was that your whole weight was coming down with you, and then you had to have a strength from the bottom of the pull up to pull yourself back up. Where if it was a strict pull up, you're just um, you're you've got um, a different. Does that make sense? Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. you'd have so a, uh, a keeping pull up done not in control yeah it can be dangerous you're putting a lot of pressure on your shoulders but if we usually have a rule you need to be able to do like a certain amount of strict pull-ups before we'll let you do a kipping pull-up oh wow okay Uh, and that's what most gyms should sort of uh abide by there are like you do get gyms out there that just don't care like yeah swing off the bar give it a crack yeah and um that's how people do or they're the videos you probably see (laughs) and the people that do get injured from it yeah um or people just have a bad experience from it and that's where they sort of get those negative comments Sort of um, like a night on tequila. Everyone has a bad night yeah, on it. Yeah. If it's a bad rap. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you are, if if you if you're really hating on it, go to a like a proper um, gymnasium. Talk to like a world level gymnast mm. and listen to them because you know you don't get uh, to be the best like a, be the best gymnast in the world without mm. doing these gymnastics kips and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they definitely have their benefit when done correctly. Mm. and yeah like you said efficiency keep going like doing out the reps and and if you're racing against the time then hell's fucking yeah i would be yeah. doing the same <laughs> yeah yeah and um and uh we have another big thing crossfit um it's all about intensity as well mm. so you don't get fitter not really working out hard mm. you'd be working at high intensity and you're doing strict mm. pull-ups you're going to be doing very slow reps and you're resting a lot because they're very very hard where if you mm. do kipping pull-ups you do a same amount of uh, you do more work in the same amount of time so that's how you actually increase your fitness and mm. your work capacity so mm. um, and would you say that would increase your um like for the general population of fat burn because the intensity is higher absolutely mm. yeah yeah so your your heart rate will be up there a bit more you'd be you know your body be working a whole lot harder so yeah you mm. will be burning more energy so calories and therefore yes fat loss will get included in that yeah um and yeah yeah, like strict pull-ups are great, build strength, and that's how we be able. That's what we do to be able to, you know, do those, you know, 50, 60 pull-ups in a row, mm. is by being able to do those, you know, 20, 30 strict ones in a row. Yeah. So, yeah, it all sort of correlates to one another. Mm. So, tell me, Matt, what's your advice for someone who is wanting to get a little bit fitter and um, and yeah, get healthier? What what would be your tips for them? Do something. Doesn't matter what you do. Just start with something, whether it's 
going for a jog or you know join a crossfit gym join f45 or those other sort of in like sort of uh, hit style gyms or whatever mm. um get into something mm. get started and then if you don't know what you feel like just try them all until you find something you like yeah you know it's um yeah it's we're all in the you know we're all in the same game we're all trying to you know mm. get people healthier so join a gym if it's a good one they'll look after you they'll yeah they'll do everything they can to make you healthier mm. yeah and I think, yeah, you got to find something that you love because there is going to be hard times. So yeah. if you um, enjoy it, then it's a little bit more. Yeah, and, and a lot of people do join those sort of class gyms like the CrossFit F45s because they get to do it with people. Mm. And, um, the amount of members that I have signed up that have come from like a just a good life with just any Globo gym, mm. like, yeah, I just got bored by myself, had no motivation. They yeah. come in, there's people to work out with. You know, they, have, they make friends, they have fun while they do it and that's how, that's how they stick with it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Like I run a gym as well and in the gym you're like people love community. They love yeah. to feel part of something. So I think yeah, being a part of that and getting involved is um definitely yeah. helps um you keep accountable to keep going back every day. Yeah. As well. Yeah, it's to be about CrossFit as well. Like you go anywhere in the world, you can go to any CrossFit gym, be like, mm. Hey yeah, I'll do CrossFit back here. I'm like, Oh, how you going? They'll probably let you do the class for free most likely. <laughs> um, yeah, you probably like buy one of their shirts or whatnot, take it back to your gym. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like it's it's really good how you can just go anywhere like in the world and go to a CrossFit gym and they'll probably they'll welcome you in with open arms and yeah. they'll ask you all about your gym and where you're from. So it's it's really cool. Yeah, that really sounds cool community. Yeah. yeah, it sounds lovely. So tell me, what's your big plans? What's your your <laughs> your biggest goal that you've got for yourself? Oh, I don't like talking about my goals. <laughs> oh, why? Oh, I get a little embarrassed. Oh, come on, tell us. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like, ultimately, I want to win the CrossFit Games. Yeah, that's that's the the big one, and that's what I'm working towards. Yeah. Have you set a like a year that you want to do it? Nah. For? No, I don't really set a time frame on it because yeah. I know sometimes, like for me, I just take forever to get to my goals. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just keep going. And eventually, it happens. So yeah. I'll just I'll just keep going till till the time comes. Um, apart from that, I just want to sort of you know set myself up for an easier life. So work mm. hard now, so I can sort of relax a bit later on. So yeah. that's an, that's another part of it as well. So yeah. they're my two sort of main things I'm looking at yeah cool yeah. do you like if you won like do you get like a prize money or something yeah there is prize money there's uh so the games has the most prize money out of out of uh, all the sort of you know competitions around the world uh it's three hundred thousand us for first oh my so, God. You win, so you win um overall that's that's first they have prize money all the way down to 20th at the games i think 20th get might out. be yeah i think 20th <laughs> is a thousand us yeah um and then every event will have money as well so first second third um in the events we'll get i think it's three thousand two thousand one thousand respectively um so if you can like just have a good event you can win three grand like you know, that pays your trip pretty much that gets you your yeah. flights so um yeah there is a bit of money there all the sort of crossfit events around the each like around the year around the world um they all have different money for them might be up to 50 might be like only like four thousand or three thousand for winning overall so yeah there's still you can still make a career out of, career out of it if uh you're willing to travel around a little bit yeah you could earn um, like a shitload of money yeah yeah those guys that have won like four years in a row they're just they're loving it <laughs> yeah i bet they're like getting paid to train and yeah and have fun and, and it's good for us too being in australia because uh we take that us and we pretty much you know it's like 300,000 yeah. is like 10 billion in Australia. Yeah. So like, <laughs> you know, like, like it's, it's pretty good when you come back over with the exchange rate, but yeah. going over is not so good. Yeah. Yeah. For, yeah. That'd be awesome. Like you win this massive event and you come back and you're like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do nice. you, do you want to own your own gym at all or? Oh, it's a good question. Or, I, I don't know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> if I did, I'd probably, I'd more rather just buy in and be a silent partner if I was part yeah. of a gym. Um, I know, oh, yeah, it's, it's a it's a very hard question. It's, mm. It hasn't really ever been on my list of things to do yet. Yeah, I'm pretty happy working or just sort of managing it for someone at the moment. Yeah, um, but yeah, we'll see see what happens. Never know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I change my mind. And tell me, who who do you look up to in the CrossFit? community or even outside of the crossfit community who's your your number one you idolize <laughs> <laughs> um i don't really um 
look up to anyone anymore yeah. at the game. So I can't really look up to my competition anymore. Oh, really? <laughs> I, you know, I used to, you know, when I was um, sort of going through like, uh, like guys like Matt Fraser and um, like Scott Panchek and all these guys, they were sort of at the top of the sport at the time. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, you know, like I want to be like him. And yeah. now I'm sort of competing against him. I'm like, I can't. Yeah, you know, I got to beat you now. I can't sort of yeah. put you up on a pedestal anymore. Yeah. So um, I still respect the hell out of them. Like they're awesome guys. Um, but yeah, I sort of I don't know. I guess I just focus on myself a bit yeah. more. And you probably realise like before they were like up here and it felt a little bit unachievable. But now you are at that level. You're like, oh, I'm yeah. the same. Like yeah. I can do yeah. this. I'm, it, it is achievable. Yeah. So I guess I'll sort of use my members and stuff. You know, like I see how far they can come yeah. from where they, like I see pretty much the start of their fitness journey to where they are now. So I can use that as like just inspiration, motivation and sort of look up to them almost. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, they keep me going because they support me as well. They always like, a few of them went over to America just to, just to watch. They probably went to watch everyone else too, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they told me it was to watch me. I um, bet it was for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so you know, they, they get a, a lot of support from them. So yeah. you know, I can always you know, inspire to sort of go good for them as well. Anyway. Yeah. So. Oh, that's lovely. Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today, okay. Matt. Thank you and for having me. Yeah, no pleasure. And I'm sure the guys um, will be keen to get into a CrossFit gym. Whereabouts are you in Brisbane? So I'm at CrossFit Cross Axe. That's over in Morningside. Oh, I'll let cool. you know that you can't miss it. So awesome. Come, come in for a drop in. Let me know that you listen to the podcast. And I'll give you a couple of free sessions. Oh, yeah, nice. All right, I'll drop the um, details underneath the podcast yeah, so they good. can check it out. <laughs> cool. Thanks so much for your support, guys. If you're listening to the podcast, please leave me a five-star written review. If you're on YouTube, like and subscribe so you can keep up to date with these incredible stories.